In this video, I'm going to review how to station over a point. I'm going to review the whole concept in general, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll feel confident to do this on your own job site. One thing you need to remember are some stationing principles. Number one is that when you station, the tool needs to know where it is. It needs to know its location. The second thing the total station needs to know is it needs to know its rotation. It needs to know basically where it is, and it needs to know where it is looking. Both of these principles are critical to remember when you're stationing with the tool. Now, when you station over a point, the location of the unit and the rotation of the unit is given to it automatically. The tool automatically will trust you, and let me explain. In this example, let's say that I take my tool and I station it right on top of grid line A1. I put it right on top of that grid line intersection. Now the tool knows exactly where it is. It knows that it's right on top of A1. Now what it doesn't know is where it's looking. Imagine if you are in your living room, somebody spins you around, puts a blindfold on you, and you don't know where you are but other than that you're in your living room. But if they tell you to walk towards your kitchen or towards your television or towards your sofa, you wouldn't necessarily know which way to start walking until somebody told you which way you were looking. The same thing applies here. The total station knows where it is, specifically at grid line section A1, but it doesn't know which way it's looking. For all it knows, it could be looking over here, over here, or over here, or any which way. So to give it a rotation, the tool just needs one more point. So for instance, here on grid line A, let's say we measure a point right up here. The tool now knows which way it's looking. It knows it's at A1, and it's looking down grid line A, and therefore it now knows where you need to be if you need to lay out anything over here in this quadrant, or over here, or even down below. So let's talk about how this applies to a real job. In this situation, I have a very basic drawing. This is a structural plan, and I have CPA3, CPA1, B1, and B2. CPA3 is located at the exact intersection of grid line A8, and I am going to use this control point as the point I'm going to station on top of. I have this other point up here called CPA1 that is located right on the same line as grid line A. Let's use the principles I just talked about to see how I can station over CPA3 and station my unit. I'll go ahead and go back to the home screen, open up the stationing tab, and I'm ready to station over a point. Please note that you will not have this option unless you have a head unit you're using that has a plumb laser pointing down. The POS 180, which is a unit I'm using from Hilti, is one of those head units and I can therefore station over a point in this way. I need a plumb laser that can shoot below the unit to tell me the point I'm on top of. I'm going to select this Stationing Over a Point tab, and immediately I'm brought to this window. Well, just like I said before, I'm going to use CPA3, which is located here on the map, as the point that I'm stationed on top of. So on this stationing screen, I've selected the point from my map. I could have also selected it from the menu, and I'm simply going to press check. The tool now knows that this is the point it's stationed on top of. But again, it's blind. It doesn't necessarily know which way it's looking. Just like you are blind when you're turned around with a blindfold in your living room, not knowing which way to go if you need to move to your TV or your kitchen, the same thing applies here. It does not know which way it's looking on the plan. So I'm going to use CPA1 as the point that I'm going to use to measure. And you can notice at the top, I'm already connected to this prism on that point. The tool is looking directly at that control point on this plan. Now one thing that might have caught your attention is you'll notice that there's two options over here. I have the option to measure that point, or I have the option to measure the angle towards that point. Both options will do the same thing, but only this option, the measurement option without the angle, will give you a little bit more information. But I'm going to use both options and I'm going to explain what they both do. I'm going to start with this simple option, this measure a point on an angle. When I click on this, you'll notice that the tool is automatically going to measure that. You're going to have two points measured. The standard deviation of the stationing is always going to be zero because the tool knows where it is because I told it where it is. And up here, CPA1 is going to turn green. Whenever you do a stationing with a point on an angle, these are always going to turn green and everything's going to zero out. Now, why is that? When you station with an angle point, I'm telling the tool not only where it is, which it needs to know, but I'm also telling its rotation. I'm telling it that it's looking right along grid line A. For this case, the tool doesn't necessarily care where CPA1 is. All it matters for me is to tell the tool that it's looking towards the same angle that CPA1 
is located at. I could have been up here, or here, or here, as long as the tool is on the same trajectory of the angle towards CPA1, I can use this as an option. Because again, the tool knows where it is, and now it'll know its rotation. It knows that it's looking down grid line A. So when I press this check mark, you'll notice that there's no deviations given to me. Even if CPA1 was off, in the sense that I wasn't exactly on CPA1, the tool's trusting me and assuming that I am on the same angle that CPA1 is, and it therefore zeroes everything out. I can press this check mark and move on and lay out. So now you're probably wondering, why would you ever use this? Why would you use the angle option if you have the option to just measure the control point itself? Well, let me give you a simple scenario. Let's imagine that CPA1 was actually located behind this column right here, and this column was blocking CPA1 from where the total station was. In that case, I can just look for this grid line and measure along the grid line, perhaps in front of that column, and therefore, this angle option would save me the trouble of trying to troubleshoot and find another control point. I've been able to place my station at the location. I'm able to use that CPA1's angle to simply measure right in front of this column to give the total station the angle it needs to be stationed on this job site. That's one scenario. Another scenario is when you're given a drawing with just one control point. Let's say you're on a drawing and you're only given one intersection and one grid line. In that case, put the tool right on top of that intersection and simply measure somewhere along that grid line that's on the same angle of another control point you create. That's another option as well. This simply gives you flexibility and I encourage you to try it, especially when you know that the angle and the point that you're on are accurate. Now let's go ahead and talk about the other option where you actually measure the actual point at its location. So in this case, I'm going to use CPA3 again as my point that I'm stationed on top of and press the green check mark. Now I'm going to measure to CPA1. For this demo, I like to use smaller distances to explain certain points. And in this situation, these points are only 8 feet apart. CPA3 to CPA1 on the plan is only 8 feet apart. So what I've done is I've placed my prism a little bit off from where CPA1 is supposed to be, just so you can see what happens. It is on the correct angle. I have placed it directly on this grid line A, but the distance from CPA3 is incorrect. And I want to show you what happens when that's the case. So in this case, CPA1 is my point. It's on the correct angle, but I'm gonna measure the actual point and let's discuss what happens. After I measured it, you'll notice that everything came up red. In fact, I don't have any information down here with stationing information, and it's unable to calculate the station. The reason it's unable to calculate the station is because the location of my prism is inaccurate. It's not the correct distance away from where CPA3, where my station is located, is expecting CPA1 to actually be. It's so significantly away from where it's supposed to be that the tool's not even going to attempt to use it because I've used this option. I'm basically telling the tool that I want it to verify that this control point itself is in the right spot. Obviously it's not and the tool's warning me. So now for this demo, I went ahead and fixed my prism to be closer to where it's supposed to be. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to where the total station at the very least will at least accept it to give me some deviation information. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna measure CPA1 one more time. And now it turned green, but let's see what the information is on the other side. First thing I want you to notice is that the stationing coordinate is still zeroed out with no deviation. What this means is that the tool is trusting me in the location that I placed it. It's on the zero, zero location on my job site with zero deviation. And just like if I, if I was to do this on an angle, if I go to the more details section, the standard deviation is also zero, and the horizontal angle is also zero. The tool is trusting me that I've given it the correct location and the correct angle. Now, even though I can press the check mark and the tool is going to accept my stationing because it's going to trust that I gave it that location and angle, it's giving me one more piece of information as a warning before I go forward. And that's over here on the left side. Let's look at the deviation on the northern and on the eastern. The tool is warning me that the location of the point that I measured, CPA1, is off on the northern aspect of my plan by 13 sixteenths of an inch. In this case, it's short, it's negative 13 sixteenths, so it needs to go a little bit further on the northern part of the plan in order for this to be a point that's 
actually accurate in relation to the location and angle I gave it. So if I'm in the field and I see this deviation, I know that this control point itself, at least in relation to the point that I stationed on top of, is incorrect. And I might need that information to take it to a general contractor or a surveyor to ask for more information. Even though my angle might be correct, as in I'm on grid line A, the point itself, CPA1, where it's designed to be, I'm being told, is off on the northern aspect of the plan by 13 sixteenths of an inch. So now let's discuss why you might prefer to use this option. Well, if you are given actual control points and you see those actual control points in the field and you're being told to use those actual control points, it doesn't hurt to go out there and actually measure the actual control point so that you get that deviation data for your own records. Yes, the tool is technically stationed and you're given it an angle and you can go forward and measure your, and lay out your points, but you're doing so knowing that that point you were given, that second control point, is not accurate to the location of the station and the angle you gave it. This is certainly something that you will want to make your GC and your surveyor aware of. I hope this video has been helpful and that you will go out there and try to station over a point on your own. I will admit, this is probably the most accurate way to station a tool when you do it correctly. This is the method surveyors use often. But again, that zero deviation is coming from the tool trusting that you have put it in the correct location and you have given it the correct rotation to let it know where it is and where it's looking. I know there might be questions about this, so please leave them in the comments.